You are now listening to a message from Eka Christian Center. Get set to be at the fire. God has blessed you. For justification from sin. When you say it's a just shall live by faith, that's the focus of that um, of the four times that the Bible mentions that scripture. We have that scripture mentioned all right, in the Old Testament once and in the New Testament thrice. But faith for justification is not the focus of faith and development service because a lot of us here are saved already. But what we learn from about faith, from the faith for justification, are the principles behind the working of faith. Glory to God. Now, we've said that faith is the response of the human spirit to the word of God. Faith is the response of the human spirit to the word of God. The human spirit has innate latency. It has an innate latency put in there by God. And when I'm talking about human spirit, I'm sure you understand that I'm talking about the recreated human spirit. Right? The recreated human spirit. The Bible says, for we are his workmanship, fashioned in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are his workmanship. So, the new creation has been fashioned by the handcraft of God in Christ Jesus. So, there is something special about us. There is something special, something beautiful about a man in Christ. And we must study this man in Christ. And we must study this man in Christ with a view to understanding what we can do now that we are in Christ. Now, let's look at these scriptures. Philemon, chapter number 1, from verse 5 to 6. Philemon, chapter number 1, from verse 5 to 6. I've always said this. I think I learned this from, was it Steve Harris that said this? I heard it for the first time. Steve Harris said, he said, what you don't have is not what troubles you. What troubles you is what you have and don't know how to use. What you don't have is not what troubles you. What troubles you is what you do have and don't know how to use. Philemon 1 verse 5, it says, Hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus and towards all saints. Verse 6, what does it say? It says, That the communication of thy faith may become what? Effectual. No, no, it says, communication of your faith. The fellowship of the faith. The communication of the faith may become effectual, may become um, productive, may become fruitful, it says, may become effectual by the word acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. The communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging. Now, this word acknowledging is the same word called, um, um, the same word, epignosis. Epignosis. Same word when we say grace and peace, we multiply it onto you. Look at Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. Let's look at it. Ephesians 1, 1 to 3. Can we read? What does it say? Paul and apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Verse 2. Everybody read. It says what? Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus. Verse 3. It now says what? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who at what? Blessed us with all what? Spiritual blessings in what? Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has blessed us. Who hath blessed us? Glory to God. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Next verse. What does it now say? 
He says what? According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So he begins to go and list the blessings that we have and we have been blessed with. Now look at Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. In the epistolic introductions, you begin to find them always beginning to talk about the blessings that we have in Christ. He says, Simon Peter, Simon Peter is a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained life precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 2, everybody reads, it says what? Grace and peace. Be what? Multiplied. It says grace and peace. Be multiplied. Now, hold, hold on. Think about it. It says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. It means that you can have grace and you can have peace in inferior measures. For if there can be a multiplication of grace and peace, it means that a person can have grace and peace in a measure that is not enough. You understand? Now, what is the multiplier effect of grace and peace according to Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2? It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through what? Through what? Through what? Through the knowledge of God. Now, uh, let me explain this way. What is Peter talking about? Peter is trying to let us understand that the presence of a thing does not immediately translate to the enjoyment of that thing. The presence of a thing does not immediately translate to the enjoyment of that thing. The presence of a gift does not immediately translate to your enjoyment of that gift. Are you following what I'm saying here? You can have a gift and not know how to use it. You can have a gift and not know how to use it. For example, there is a camera there that is being op- operated by BAC. But if you put me behind that camera, nothing much is going to happen. Do you know why? I do not know how to operate it. Does that in any way reduce the functionality of the camera? No. It does not. The issue is what I know and what I don't know. Look at that uh, keyboard there. If you put me behind that keyboard, I, I would be make. I mean, I'm going to make a mess of it. I don't be pam pam. You know, you understand. The best way I could do is even sandalili sandalili. I wouldn't be able to play. You know, I wouldn't be able to play. It. But you put someone with knowledge and skill and training behind that keyboard, and all of a sudden, the output is what is different. What is Peter saying? He's saying grace and peace be multiplied unto you through knowledge. So, knowledge is the multiplier effect in the kingdom of God. The same word knowledge here in 2 Peter 1, all right, epignosis, is the same word knowledge in Philemon 1 6. Acknowledging. Acknowledging. It says, acknowledging every good thing that is in you. Oh, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Acknowledging every good thing thing in you every good thing in you so what that tells you is this listen are you a born again christian are you in jesus christ there is an abundance of good things that are in you a lot of believers have been trained to be conscious of curses conscious of demons conscious of bad things they have not been trained to be conscious of the every good Thing that is in them in Christ Jesus. It says that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Now, how does this relate to faith? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. How does this relate to faith? Number one. If you are not persuaded about who you are, your identity in Christ, your faith will not produce results. Your faith will not produce results. The realm of the spirit does not respond to timidity. The realm of the spirit does not respond to uncertainty. Are you following what I'm saying? The realm of the spirit does not respond to people who are tossed to and fro, who say morning today and night tomorrow. Go to Mark 11.23. 
The realm of the spirit responds to people who are resolute in their convictions concerning a matter. Go back there. That's why in the law of faith, you have his stressed and shall not doubt. 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 Mark 11, 23. Can we read it? It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall what? Say unto this mountain. Shall say unto this mountain. Be thou removed. And be thou what? Cast into the sea. And shall not what? Doubt. The word doubt there is the start. So. The start so means to waver mentally. It means to waver mentally. That's what it means. To waver. One major reason why people waver is actually due to a lack of conviction of their identity. Why did Jesus never waver when he spoke to the fig tree, when he spoke to sick bodies? Hallelujah. When he was before Lazarus' tomb and he said, Father, I thank you because you always what? Hear me. I thank you for you always hear me. You always hear me. That is That kind of assurance is fed by absolute conviction in your identity. One of the first things that God does is affirm the identity of Jesus. If you go to St. Matthew's Gospel chapter 3, all right, and you look at from verse 11 downwards, you know, 11, it says, I, John the Baptist saying he was not the Messiah. He says, I indeed baptized with water, but there's someone coming, the last shirt of, his shoe, of whose shoes I am unworthy to lose. He shall baptize with the Holy Ghost and with what? With fire. Glory to God. Then the Bible doesn't necessarily know that if you read downwards, you now find that Jesus shows up and, you know, seeks to be baptized by John. And John dips him in the water. And when Jesus comes out, the Bible says a voice came from heaven. This is my what? Beloved son, in whom I am what? Well, pleased. So you see that God, the Father, affirms the identity of Jesus. Why? You will not be able to do exploits if you do not know who you are in God first. Glory to God. If you do not know who you are in God first, the first thing life is going, the first question life is going to ask you is who are you? Who are you? Do you know? Who are you? Do you know? After Mark 4, all right no after mark 3 when god affirms jesus in mark 4 jesus goes and enters into the wilderness and is tempted of the devil the first question the first temptation all right on jesus was around his identity if thou be if thou be the son of god if thou be the son of god if thou be the son of God. So Satan will want to shake and test your conviction surrounding your identity. That's the first thing. So Peter tells you that the only way the grace and the peace you have received is going to be multiplied is via knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. knowledge. Everybody say what? Knowledge. Louder. Say knowledge. Let me also tell you something. Listen. Whenever God wants to give something, God does ne- never gives it to you in the full form. Never. Never. He will never give it to you in his full form. <laughs> never. <laughs> so, for example, God wants to give the earth mango trees. But you don't see mango trees. What do you see? You see a mango seed. A mango seed. So he puts a law in the earth. Genesis 8.22. As long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest. So what he has done is, so far as I have given you the seed, you can create the harvest. Praise the Lord. So Jesus... When he's talking about faith, what does it liken faith to? He says, if you have faith like a what? Grain of mustard seed. Not like a tree of mustard plant, but like a grain 
of mustard seed. Why? Because every single thing God is God gives to you, He gives to you as a seed. If you look at First Peter chapter one verse twenty-three, it says, "Being born again, not of corruptible what seed, but of what incorruptible seed, the seed." Everybody sitting here, you are the product of the fertilization of a seed. So that means you didn't just appear all full on the earth. No, you are the product of the seed of your father. So what has God done? God has given everybody here faith as a what? Seed. Romans chapter 12. <laughs> Romans chapter 12. And let me tell you something. One major thing that would happen to ensure that your faith grows is that it must be exposed to adversity. Adversity is a necessary ingredient for the growth of faith. A faith that is not tested is fake. A faith that is not tested is fake. Adversity is necessary. Feeding of the faith is necessary. You understand? Watering of faith is necessary. All those things are important. Why are you in faith and development services this morning? To water the faith. You understand? To feed it. To feed the faith. Why do you come to church? All right? To feed the faith. To water the faith. To ensure that you are, there is a continuous attention given to that seed of faith. Because if that faith is to grow and increase in influence, then you need to give attention to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Church, I hear what I'm saying here. Now, look at this quickly. Romans chapter number 12. <laughs> Glory to God. Romans 12 and verse 1. What does he say? What does he say? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that ye present your bodies. Uh huh. Only an assembly want to go, which is your word? His neighbor service. All right? I'm going to verse 3, but I want to just read it. Verse 2 now says, I be not conformed to this word, but be what? Transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to what? Prove. What is that? Good. And? And? Now, verse 3 now says what? For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think so badly, according as God at what? Dealt to what? Every man the measure of faith. Every man the measure of faith. So every man in Christ has what? Faith. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. This measure of faith, or the seed of faith, is also called the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. All right? The spirit of faith. The spirit of God is in every man as a seed form. And why do I mean by as a seed form? In that the seed is the most uh, uh, inconspicuous part of the tree. In that the seed is buried on the ground. You don't see it. So also the spirit is within your body. Nobody sees the spirit. What people see are the manifestations of the spirit. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? Yeah, the manifestations of the spirit. Glory to God. Now look at 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 13. It says, we having the same. We having what? The same spirit of faith according as it is what written i believed everybody say i believed and therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore now so the seed of faith is inside you god has put faith inside each and every one of us so what do you do with seeds the first thing you do with seed is that you plant it Hallelujah. That seed has been planted into your heart. When was it planted into your heart? The seed of it, it was planted into your heart when you heard the gospel. Glory to God. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the moment you heard the word of God and you believed it, the 
seed of faith was planted into you. So your heart is the soil for the seed of faith. It therefore means that from the soil of your heart, in which the seed of faith has been planted, a tree of faith must grow. And when that tree of faith grows, what is going to happen? Fruits of faith will manifest. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? Are you seeing what I'm saying here? So, the seed has been planted, but now, for us to get from the planting of the seed to the manifestation of the fruit, that's why we are here. Do you get it now? That's why we are here. So, how do you cause your faith to grow? First thing, you water it. You attend to it. Glory to God. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. How do you water your faith? You water your faith by exposing it to the water of the word. To the milk of the word. Every single day. Every single day. Every single day. A lot of Christians are looking for magic. There is no magic in the kingdom. In this kingdom, if you jump up, you will come down. <laughs> Amen. What did I say? You will what? If you jump up, you will come down. Your faith will deliver to you, per time, the capacity that your faith has. <laughs> let me give you one. Let me tell you one, let me tell you one story. I thank God for so this is God. I remember one time we had one program like this. Um, a program. And I liked, um, you know, a, a particular car. So what we did was, uh, I went to rent it. <laughs> you understand? I rented the car. So we rented the car for the conference. And I sat down. They, they came with driver. I sat down at the back. <laughs> and I felt feeling good. Amen. That's the last time I did that kind of nonsense. Amen. Yeah, because I think it's, it's nonsense. It's rubbish. You know, I said, stand inside. I was taking pictures. Then I was now doing live to encourage people. <laughs> You know, brethren, you see this life, you know. Yes, I was. <laughs> Listen to me. If you do not grow your faith, you will fake the results. <laughs> and you live in a world where fakery is very easy. If you don't grow your faith, you will fake the results. You will fake that you have grown up when you are just jumping up. Are you following what I'm saying? You will go into a friend's house and pose as though it's your house. You will go and rent Airbnb and be saying, I just woke up on my bed today. I mean, dear God, so, you know, I just want to. Have it. And you will make like 100 videos and you will spread it for the year. So people will think that you understand. If you don't grow your faith, you will fake the results. You will fake it. So you need to attend to it every day. It's it's almost ritualistic, I think, but daily. First Peter 2 2, right? Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may what? Grow. Hmm. As a minister, by the grace of God, um, okay, I think we have, I think, is it, it's eight branches now, Abby? Good. By the grace of God, um, okay, I better is starting May 5th. Praise God. Then Oikea London begins services. So they are all in their pre-launch phases. All right, so we have pre-launch and launch. But Oikea London begins pre-launch services April 28th. So by the first week, we'll be in 10 locations. Praise God. And by the end of this year, we'll be in 14. Now, the economy of the country is, you know, things are getting more expensive. This venue will say, oh, we want to discuss our payments. This other one, this, we want to raise rent and stuff like that. We are having all those issues. Praise God. Now, when I hear all those things like that, I now say, wow. So one of the first reasons the Lord wants me to grow my faith as a minister is for ministry. Because if my faith is not strong, hallelujah, I will shrink back from what he has called us to do. Are you following what I'm saying? Because as you grow your faith, you will now begin to find that you are more daring. Your capacity to jump when he says you should jump will increase. What a seed can achieve, cannot achieve, a tree will achieve it. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can climb a tree, but you cannot climb a seed. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. You can climb a tree and take shade under a tree, but you cannot under a seed. That is why seeds of righteousness must become oaks of righteousness. Hallelujah. The Bible calls us oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. But he did not plant us as oaks. He planted us as seeds. So you nurture the seeds. Daily. Nurture it. Our, our newborn babes desire the sincere make of the word of God that he may grow thereby. First Peter 2.2 2. Joshua 1.8 But this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. All right, but need thou shall what meditate what day and night. That is nurturing, 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 nurturing day and night. Because what God gives you gives you as a seed. Hallelujah! I said Hallelujah. The next thing you do, all right, to a seed, is that you not just water it, you expose it to sunlight. <laughs> Glory to God. You expose it to what? Sunlight. Nothing grows in the dark. Nothing grows in the what? In the dark. What's sunlight? Sunlight, I use it as a metaphor for the glory of God. What's the glory of God? The glory of God is the spirit of God. So, what you do is you must stay filled daily with the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 5.18 Be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. The infilling or the continuous infilling of the Spirit is essential to growing in faith. See, Pastor, how do I get get a stay filled with the Spirit? First place is talking in tongues. Hallelujah. Shall I tell you on that one? listening to anointed music singing and dancing along create an atmosphere a spirit filled atmosphere around you some of you fill your atmosphere with devils unintentionally maybe you are driving home or you are driving to work and you put on the review and the song is going I'm going to mess you up I'm going to blow, blow your brains out blow my brains out blow my, blow my brains out yeah man going to kill myself come on and you are listening and saying I don't want to change it I don't want to change it I don't want to change it <laughs> you answer you are driving you are, the devil has already introduced a depressed thought to you your mind He's of you to put some nice songs that would bring joy into the atmosphere. You are looking, you are listening to so so take my pain away. So the, the, the song itself it communicates suicide. Are you following what I'm saying? Even without the words, the, the song, what is introducing? Is die tomorrow, die tomorrow. In fact, die now, die now. And you are listening, you're like, mm, oh, so, so. They, and you, you are driving, you're like, ah, so, so, take my pain. Ah, this pain, take it away. <laughs> Your faith can't grow like that. Living to depressed songs. Look for good joy, songs that the beat is high. And you are, you are bouncing in the car. Pa, pa. You understand? Uh-huh. Anointed songs. Glory to God. Play some Nathana Basi. You understand? Songs that take you up, your focus towards God. Start saying in the Spirit. Give it full of the Spirit. Expose us to light. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. To light. You may need to stop listening to the news. Especially that channel where they only say bad things. You, understand? you know some radio channel station? They only, <laughs> you understand? If there's a good news, they know how to make it bad. The dollar has dropped from 1,009 to 1,002. But how long will it last? <laughs> how long will this recovery be for? I know for the day before they are done. You're anxious. Yes. How long will it last for? 
and you are now there in diligent expectation that it will go up again. <laughs> so, what is supposed to make you happy is giving you anxiety. Are you following what I'm saying? Cut off those kinds of things. There is a reason great men of faith always say they don't read the newspapers. Yeah. There's a reason. You understand? There's a reason. Bishop Wedeko will tell you, I don't read the newspapers. Smith will go to us to say, I, didn't, I don't read the newspaper. It's the devil's news. There's a reason. Glory to God. There's a reason. Don't feed your mind with things that will restrict your faith. One of the, uh, the soils that was not able to produce results after the, 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 the seed of the world was sowed into it, in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, was the one that was planted among thorns. He said, the one planted among thorns, the seed of the world of God was planted in, and the concerns of this world, the anxieties, shook, shook it, so that it couldn't produce results. Deal with your mind. Take things out. Hallelujah. And let the sun of God's glory shine on it. Glory to God. Third thing you to do, all right, when it comes to growing your faith, put that faith to work. A faith you don't put to work will not produce anything. Put the faith to work. What are you talking about? Put it to work. Give by faith. Take steps by faith. You're believing God for a business. Start the thing. Start it. Eh, I don't have money. What do you have money for? Do you have, go and register it on CAC. What do you have money for? A logo. Oh, I don't have money for a logo. You have, go on Canva, design something. And make it your DP. Take steps of faith. If you don't take the steps, nothing is going to show. Nothing is going to happen. The world and the realm of the spirit responds to audacious people. It responds to audacity. Timidity will not help you. All this, I am shy, shy, that you are doing up and down. It's not going to help you. Amen. I'm shy. You, 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 are, you, are, you are cursing yourself. You are shy. What do you mean by you are shy? You are not shy. You just don't have enough knowledge. Glory to God. The moment you find out that you are a king in the realm of the spirit... I've not met a shy billionaire. You understand? They may be reserved. They may be introverted. But when it's time to talk, they will talk. Oh, amen. Amen. For example, I've not, seen a sh- I've not seen one. You understand? I've not seen a shy billionaire. Because you see, except you, they, they gave you the money. You, you, feel, you understand what I'm saying? Because for you to be a billionaire, you have to sell something. You have to be in people's faces. So how can you be shy? There are a lot of them that are actually introverts, but you know, the business they are doing made them audacious. I've not met a shy man of God. There's no man of God in the entire Bible that was shy. Moses, that was introverted, when assignment came, he started doing things. Glory to God. He started doing things. Stretch forth your hand over the sea the and divide it. He didn't say, Lord, what do you mean? I'm shy. No, he divided it in. In fact, when God told him, go and speak to Pharaoh, and he was saying, I can't talk. God was angry with him. God is angry with a shy person. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, but you get what I mean. Because when God is saying, go, they are giving them, Lord, what do you mean? Do you understand? What do you mean? God has arranged kingdom marriage for you. You are believing God for kingdom marriage. You come to church. You cited a fine babe. She's in church, single, confessing, I will meet my husband. I will meet my husband. But you, the person God has said, oh yeah, go there. You say you are shy. What will I say? Angels are frustrated with you. God is frustrated with you. Holy Spirit is frustrated with you. Devil self are confounded. They don't know what because they, they want to, you know, they are waiting for you. You're not seen. Everybody is frustrated with you. you. You say you cannot make a move. Glory to God. You have plan A oh, five years. You have been smiling at the sister like a fool. Oh, no, the plan B came, made move, boom, they are married now. <laughs> now you are not telling pastors, uh, you know, fake come on. You say, you see, the Lord told me that uh, you understand. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you don't use your faith, there are doors that were opened that you will not walk into. Faith. Step, the first step, you should take it. If you like, listen to someone of faith from now to tomorrow. If you don't act, it will not result into anything. 
There are some people that have been getting filled, believing God to be filled with the Spirit of God for 20 years. They've been reading all the Kenyagi, listening to all the messages, looking at people getting filled. They say, it's not their time. They are waiting for their time. God's time is the best. But Bible said, open your mouth and I will what? Feel it. But they are, God's time is the best. God's time is the what? Is the best. Preach the gospel. I don't think it's my gift. Which gift? <laughs> faith! Everybody say faith. faith. You must exercise that faith. Anything that is not exercised does not get stronger. You need the adversity. You need the opposition. You need the challenge. It is for your faith to grow. Many a times, God will give you greater assignments than your present level so that your faith will rise to the level of the assignment. Then when your faith has risen to that level of assignment, it will raise it up again. Because if the assignment is not greater than your present level, your present level will not get, ever get better. Are you hear what I'm saying? Are you, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You need a bigger devil. You need a bigger challenge. It is how you will grow. Glory to God. I said glory to God. It is how you will grow. That money you need to pay one thing or the other, it's a good challenge. Glory to God. It's a what? Good challenge. You are going to discover certain things too. You understand? You are going to. Glory to God. Material things in the scheme of things are nothing. But let me tell you something. One of the things I have learned that, you know, using faith for material things actually does is that it helps us grow our faith. It helps us grow our faith. Then you pass that level, then there's another level. You pass that level, there's another level. You keep growing, you keep growing, you keep growing. So God is using all those things, the elements of this world, to train you for your assignments. Glory to God. Straining you, stretching you for your assignment. So, how do you grow your faith? Number one, you what? You what? No, the planting is done by God. You water it. All right? You water it. You nurture it. That's the first thing that you do. What's the second thing that you do? You what? You expose it to sunlight. That means you, all right, expose it to the glory of God. You stay filled with the Spirit of God. Second thing that you do. So, set it in your heart. What are you going to use your faith for this week? What is it? What, what are you going to use your faith for this week? What are you going to use your faith for this week? What are you going to use your faith for this week? Glory to God. There are a lot of people that will say, I've been believing, I've been believing, I've been believing. Well, I say, good, you've been believing. I, I, I like this, your believing part. That believing God for something. So uh, let's talk about the action part. What have you been acting on? What have you been doing? You see that using part, that acting, that exercise part? If that part is divergence, there will be no manifestation. God gave you a word. You're a wonderful producer. You're going to produce great songs. Good, fantastic. I, let's go for your life. Action. What have you done? Have you entered studio or got a laptop, got all those bits and mixed the bits? What have you done? Or is it still at the seed stage? If you are deficient in the acting part of it, you will lack manifestation. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Have you learned something here today? Church, have you learned something here today? Faith. Faith is given to you as a seed. It is your responsibility to nurture and grow it until it becomes an oak of righteousness. And listen, when it has gotten to a level of oak, do you know what you just do? You nurture it still, but you know what you nurture it? After you nurture it, you now begin to eat the fruits. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You now begin to what? Eat the fruits. Can you eat the fruit of a seed? No. But you can eat the fruit of a tree. Rise up on your feet. Talk in other tongues. Hallelujah. Talk in other tongues. I, I want to hear you talk in other tongues. We talked about getting filled with the Spirit of God. Just talk in other tongues. Zakadalabaye. Rogoboro soto. Ratoko barahande de hasu kadababa sandahaya.
Radapa katala rosak tilagra. Jung rodo bodo boso toko boria. Sakata la bandeli grokondra hasta. <laughs> my faith work, my faith produces results. Regos fradila kashandara cobra hakadia sunga. Jebra hakdele grosta. Jadia katala brates to go bon desiraka. Jela to brahaka. Ha ha glory. Jedebele bara. Zako pratila grosta da gasta. Zebaron de kelira cura shkaradiga. Zebra go sabra akta la giga. Se brodon de registro bra hatile reombra fi compro di skeria shora raba di a compra tasa gaya oh glory 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 my faith produces results now and always oh raba shanda raga dosta bagi rego pratila gasta ragosta ragosta ragista rega de bacos tregida bashonda rakata i oh thank you lord jesus Listen to me. What community church does for you is that your faith is watered. Are you following what I'm saying? So this is why you must not take church attendance carelessly. Praise God. I, I, I not only value coming to church here, all right? As a minister, I invest in attending meetings. It's important for my faith. It's important for you. So don't be flippant. Don't be careless. It's an investment. So that when you stand, where it matters, you produce results. Glory to God. All right, so we're going to the main service now. God bless you. See you soon. Hallelujah. for listening we are sure that you have been blessed for more messages kindly search for our telegram channel using the link t.me slash oikia cc god has blessed you